This is the first of a series of three videos explaining how the cell phone network functions. We'll also be talking about cell phone technology from 1G to 5G. In this picture, we have a base station with antennas mounted on a tower. Each one of these antennas are transmitting a different frequency to prevent interference. All of these antennas could be owned by the same provider or different providers like AT&T, Sprint and Verizon, plus many others who often share towers to save on costs. There are 395,000 base stations in the United States and they are constantly broadcasting signals on their own special frequencies which cell phones are programmed to detect. Included in each cell phone network provider signal is a unique network code which identifies the provider. Most phones today carry a SIM card. SIM card stands for Subscriber's Identity Module. As we see here, this is where the network codes are embedded. If the network code received from the base station is the same as the home network code embedded in the SIM card, this would be confirmation to the phone that it is receiving a signal from the home network. The home network is the cell phone provider which you sign up with to get your service. However, if the network code received is different, this is confirmation to the phone that it is receiving a signal from a foreign network and the phone would display roaming on its screen. If there is no network signal at all, the phone would assume it is out of range of a base station, so it would display no service on the screen. Now here's a cellular network. Um, first of all, I'm going to explain to you exactly what each one of these uh, parts within the cellular network does, and then we'll go through exactly how calls are made on the, this network or how you get onto the internet or how you receive calls. We're going to talk about the whole thing. How the entire cellular network functions. Okay. Now, um, this is a telephone here and this is a base station. And these are all base stations here connected to a switch. This is the mobile switch. It's called an MSC which stands for Mobile Switching Center. Now this mobile switching center have a VLR and HLR registry. These are just databases where information is kept. We're going to be talking about that. And here you have the internet which is connected with a trunk cable. And we have other trunk cables connecting from the MSC to the regular landline switch. So if, you, if landlines need one to call cell phones, there's a trunk cable going from the landline switch to the cell phone switch. Now the all MSCs are connected together. Here we have an MSC for AT&T which we have as a home MSC. Like I say for instance, if you got your service from AT&T, AT&T would be a home MSC. And Sprint over here would be a foreign MSC. So if you are in this area and using your cell phone, you would be roaming. If you are a customer of Sprint and you are connected to the Sprint network, Sprint will become your home MSC and if you go into the AT&T network, you will be roaming on the AT&T network. That's basically all it means. Now the B stands for business office. So all your records on, on if you pay your bill, etc. is kept right here. So and whenever you make a call, this information is checked to make sure your bill is up to date before that call is put through. Okay. Now, um, backhaul. Backhaul is just the line connected from the MSC back to the base station. This is usually a fiber optic line that is buried. In some cases, it could be a microwave link connecting from the MSC back to the base stations in cases where um, there's no, in cases where you cannot run any cables underground, they may use a radio frequency. But in most cases, I would think that it will be an underground line going from the MSC back to the base station. 
Now over here is the same thing. Um, the MSC is connected to base stations. Now every MSC is connected to their own base stations. So if you are with Sprint, Sprint have their own base stations. Um, if you're with AT&T, they're connected to their own base stations, etc. Okay. Now the way this all works, we have a cell phone sitting right here. Let's say you just got the cell phone. It's brand new. You've never used it before. And you went out and you went to AT&T and you got a SIM card. And you just put your SIM card in for the first time and you, and you power that phone up. When you power that phone up, the phone is going to be looking for a signal. And this signal will be coming from the base station. And within this signal would be an MSC, Mobile Network Code. This network code is a three-digit code that the phone looks for. Now, if the network code that the phone receives is the same as a home network code which the phone has sitting in there on the SIM card, then the phone knows that it's on the home network. However, if this network code is different, it knows it's on a foreign network. Like if the phone was sitting over here in the Sprint area and it powers that phone on for the first time, it wouldn't get the home network code, it would get the Sprint network code. So the phone would know it's on the Sprint network. So it would display roaming on the line. If the phone doesn't get any code at all, it knows it's out of range of any network. So it would say no service on the phone. Now let's assume that we did get a network code and it's a home network code. Now the next thing the phone wants to know before it communicates back to the switch here is it wants to find out what's the phone number and all of that information is on the network card so it looks for the phone number and it looks for the country code because it needs these three pieces of information to communicate back to the MSC and it puts all of these three pieces of information into a code called the IMSI code International Mobile Subscriber Identity it has the country code, the country code depending on the country you're in. For the US it's 1, Canada is 1, India is 91, UK is 44. Every country is basically different. The network code, three digit code, and this is unique to the network that you're on. So this number changes depending on what provider you have. And then here you have the phone number. This phone number is a 10 digit number and you know, whatever your phone number may be. So it takes this information, which is the IMSI code. Now the IMSI code, the International Mobile Subscriber Identity Code, is sent from your phone back to the MSC. The MSC receives this information for the very first time. It will check with the business office to authenticate that information, just to make sure that you are a customer and you should be on the network. Once this information has been authenticated, the IMSI code will be stored in the HLR registry. HLR stands for Home Location Registry. So this information will stay there as long as you're a customer. And at the same time that that IMSI code is sent, also, your location information is sent at the same time from the phone back to the MSC. The MSC will store your location information, which tells the MSC exactly where you're located. You're located in the vicinity of base station number one. So all this information is stored in the HLR registry. What the MSC will go ahead and do at that time is to make up a fictitious number to correspond with your IMSI code and it will store this new fictitious number in the VLR database and then the MSC will send a copy of this back to your phone and this new number is called the TMSI code temporary mobile subscriber identity now the TMSI code is what the phone is going to use to communicate with the network from now on. It would not use the IMSI code anymore. Every time that this phone needs to make a call or needs to get on the internet, this TMSI code is used to authenticate the customer on the network. 
instead of the IMSI code. The reason why is because the IMSI code is very sensitive information and providers do not want subscribers sending this information more than once because at this between the phone and the base station is going through the air and this is security risk at this point this information is very vulnerable so they give the phone a fictitious number to use that doesn't mean anything to anyone else but the switch who can cross reference that number to confirm that it is legitimate when a call goes through so now this phone is registered on the network and it's sitting there and it's ready to make calls or receive calls let's say someone from a landline up here decide to make a phone call to this phone down here so this person here dials the number it goes through the switch goes to the msc the msc will check uh, to see who that telephone number belongs to by comparing that number to the number in the hlr registry remember we have the imsi code in this area here which have the phone number and all the other information belonging to customers so when a call comes in it's checked with this registry here just to see who this inf customer is and then it will check with the business office to make sure the customer is a legitimate customer now that this customer has been authenticated the next thing the MSC has to do is to find out where the customer is located as you remembered when the customer registered for the first time they sent their location information through and it was stored in the HLR database so now the MSC will go to the database and get that information and it would find that the customer is located in the area of base station number one so now that call would be put through to base station number one along with the call this MSC send two frequencies to the base station. Now these two frequencies are used for the talk path between the base station and the phone. One to transmit from the base station to the phone and one to transmit from the phone back to the base station. Once the call is answered, um, these frequencies will be used and until the customer decided to terminate the call. When the call is terminated, the frequencies will drop off and the MSC will be free to use these same frequencies for another customer's call at any time. This is the first of three videos covering the cell network. On the next video, we'll be looking at how calls are handed off from base stations within the home network and also base stations between the home network and the foreign network. So we'll be also looking at roaming and we'll be also covering everything from 1G right up to the 5G. So if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.